Hello, and welcome to the recording of our pop-up Zoom presentation on place-based learning opportunities in Alaska. Let's get started. I'm Brenda Duty, the Project Wild and Youth Education Coordinator for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. I'm here today with Melissa Sykes from the Fairbanks Soil and Water Conservation District, the Project Wet Coordinator, and Molly Gillespie, the Alaska Project Learning Tree State Coordinator. Our goal today is to design educational activities for students of all ages that are engaging and enhance their learning experience. So many people ask, well, how do, how do I get started? Well, first of all, changing our mindset to understand that getting outside, you can really learn anything. Math, science, social studies, it can all happen outside. We can understand and appreciate our backyard uh, by engaging outside as well. And we really want to be able to ask good questions, questions that will be able to help us develop tests to find our answers and mostly to keep us wondering and wandering in our great outdoors. So let's talk about what is place-based learning or pedagogy of place. It usually happens in a, a local community or a location. Um, really delving into that eco region, it uses a thematic approach. For example, if you wanted to teach about moose, you could create some interdisciplinary opportunities by reading about moose. You can talk about math and population dynamics. Um, there's just so many things that you could teach about and really create a 360 degree view of moose. It uses that local landscape and our local communities and it engages, engages active learning by putting all of those skills together and showing that in actuation through a service learning project or a citizen science project, getting them to actually practice what they have learned. And more than anything, we hope to create a personal connection to the resource with lifelong learning and an engaged citizen. Let's give them the opportunity to participate in the conversations that might happen uh, later in their life. So how do we accomplish this? Well, if we go to where the learning is happening, school yards, parks, or state lands, we can then align the learning through standards and skill sets. We really want to be Alaska specific and then expand um, to other places, create partnerships, just as we're demonstrating today with three, the three projects working together. And we want if your school or your school district wants to integrate more place-based learning, um, then you can use the Alaska Environmental Literacy Plan. That is that framework that will help you engage um, in making and in integrating more place-based learning into your instruction. Um, using inquiry during instruction is a big deal. Before we can find answers, we have to really develop a strong question. We want to address learning styles through active learning. And act, if you have access to research or researchers or current events, you're going to create relevancy, something that they can read in a book, but then see actually happening outside their door. And um, there's no reason why you can't have some fun. The research does show us that when students are having fun, they're generally more engaged. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the education resources from the wildlife education program from Fish and Game. Let's start with some curriculum. The Alaska Wildlife Curriculum Guides are five guides that were developed to be very Alaska specific. Project Wild is a nationwide curriculum guide and teachers soon found out that they had to substitute this species or substitute this circumstance. Well, we eliminated that by making these guides very Alaska specific. We have one for wetlands, one for forests, for tundra, for ecology, and our most newly updated guide is called Wildlife for the Future. I like to say it's, it's really better for junior high and high school students and it answers that question, why do I need to know algebra? Well, if you're living in Alaska and you're considering going moose hunting, we have to know how many moose to hunt. So the activities in this guide will help 
uh, students understand that process through the research. What does the research tell us to um, help develop the, the test so that we can come up with that numerical answer? All of the lessons are laid out with um, easy instructions as well as the activities um, within that can be done inside or outside. We also provide professional development for teachers on all of the guides that you will see today. You'll see in the corner we've got some wood bison and our researcher Tom Seaton. This workshop was actually conducted at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center where we actually practice what we preach. We took the teachers to the resource, the bison, and to with the researcher to learn firsthand uh, what was the process for releasing wood bison into the wild and what is their population doing right now. We also go through all of the activities that we have available so teachers know how to use them. All of our guides have background content, so you don't have to be a rocket surgeon to do these activities. The materials that you need to conduct these activities are inside of each one of the guides. But those ecology cards are super useful. There are 270 cards in this kit, in this, this set. Um, they're all illustrated by Alaskan artist Conrad Fields, and each one of them is correct um, in its physiology. So if you've got a student that wants to learn how to draw, draw a kingfisher, they can draw that card and actually use it as an illustration to guide them. On the back of each card, you'll see an F, T, or W, forest, tundra, or wetland. Some information about that, um, that animal, their traits, their habitat, their foods, who eats them, and a little known fact that at the bottom. You, you might, um, if you're making food chains or food webs or um, learning about regional resources, this is a great um, opportunity. You can download each one of the Alaska Wildlife Curriculum or the Ecology Cards for free on our website. Or you can purchase the cards in a stack like you see in the, the photo here. They're coated with a little bit of a um, plastic coating to help them last a little bit longer than a, just a paper card would do. But there are all out throughout the Alaska Wildlife Curriculum, you'll see references to ecology cards and, and here they are. Next, the uh, part, department's fishing game website. This website is full of information. If you want to send your students somewhere to do some research, to learn about an ecosystem or species in Alaska, this is a great place to go. As you see that it has been organized in such a way that it's easier for students to find information. The different species are um, divided by birds, fish, reptiles, mammals. Um, if you're teaching about ecosystems, it's another great resource for them to learn about one of the 32 eco regions in Alaska. So I encourage you to um, check out the Vimeo and the YouTube channel from Fishing Game. There are all sorts of resources there from fish to, to wildlife as well. So it's a great place to shop for background materials as well. Next is our Wild Wonders Kids magazine. For the last 10 years, we've been printing and developing these magazines on different topics that um, students are studying about wildlife or habitat would be interested in. Um, the Wild Wonders are printed each year and you can sign up for a, a subscription and receive a free classroom set for your students every year um, in that subscription. You'll see our latest one is called Wild Foods Learn, Harvest, and Share. This, uh, is a great topic learning about the different foods that Alaskans um, gather and hunt in Alaska and a great way to create some interactivity. So you can see that you can cut out each one of these hexagons and there are all sorts of species um, that are throughout the entire magazine and you can create different activities for students. In, in this example, we were looking at how many berries are throughout the entire magazine. And now let's, so let's sort them in a straight line. Well, what's different about some of these berries than others? 
and create that dichotomous key slowly. There's a lot of different activities that you can do um, that are suggested on the back. And you'll see also that there is a website in development right now is a page, a web page that you can do some guided learning with, with your students. You can get them all on the site at the same time and actually move the hexagons into different um, configurations based on a series of challenges that you can walk through with your students. So you can sign up for this uh, subscription on our website as well. Next is our at home or at school website. This website was developed specifically as a response to the COVID needs and at home learn and distance learning that ramped up this year for our students. Um, here we just downloaded everything that we thought that uh, teachers might be looking for in a more thematic approach. Um, for example, you'll see tracks and animal signs. Everything you need is right there in tracks and animal signs. The uh, track cards that you see unfolded there are also available for you to download for free or for you to request a classroom set. There's videos in there. Um, worksheets, all sorts of materials. And so I encourage you to check out that at home or at school website. Included on that website are how to videos by our staff and um, how to use some of those activities. Next, we have kits to borrow. Each regional office has kits to loan in uh, several different ways. Right now, the Anchorage office um, is all of their kits are, are loaned through the Arliss Library at the University of Alaska Anchorage campus. The Palmer office is also loaning kits right now. Other offices are not able to loan kits due to COVID, but I encourage you to keep this tab as things uh, relax, you'll be able to get your hands on some of those kits. We have skull kits, fur kits. Um, you'll see the ice lenses here. We've got a great permafrost kit to loan. As one of the most popular kits that we loan out is the Critter Camera Kit. You can do some discovery and um, finding tracks of wildlife, put up some cameras, and see if you can trap some images of what's going on when you're not around. And uh, many students have been surprised. They expect to see the hair when they see hair tracks, but they didn't expect to see the links. So it might be really interesting for your students to make that just those suppositions and see if their test is correct. Of course, Project Wild is a big part of what we do at Fishing Game, mostly through Growing Up Wild. Growing Up Wild is an early childhood um, curriculum guide used throughout Alaska right now. Some, some schools have used it exclusively, have integrated a lot of those activities. Here you'll see a worksheet on owls and their food chains. It's put together with shape and an opportunity for your students to, to talk through it. You'll see the little guy working here on the, the cookie tray. The pieces of the puzzle actually have magnets on the back, so there's no mess to clean up. And he sat there actually talking his way through um, so-and-so eats this and so-and-so eats that he, and uh, really showing us his learning. So it's a great evaluation tool, um, one of many through Growing Up Wild. I really want you to know too that you are not alone. Um, I consult with teachers all the time, so I encourage you to give me a call or to send me an email, which is really the fastest way to get a hold of me these days, and to sign up for our semi-annual newsletter. Um, you can get the scoop on professional development opportunities that are coming up, kits and other materials that are available to you and what's happening um, around the state in the, in the different regions uh, with fishing game. So you can register on our website under teacher training if you have any issues with signing up, of course, you can just send me a message and I'll be happy to help you through that. Thank you for listening to in about some of the many resources we have available for you to use for place-based learning. And we hope to hear from you soon. Melissa's up next. 
Hi, my name is Mel Sykes and I work for the Fairbanks Soil and Water Conservation District. I am the Natural Resource Education Specialist here and one of the things I get to do with my job is teach Project WET. Project WET is a national program designed to work with educators who want to teach about water and its importance in our lives. We all rely on water. We're made up mostly of water. We love to go to places that have water. How do we get kids to understand the importance of clean, fresh, available water to everybody? Project WET does this on a national and international level. I'm going to share a video that Project WET put together to explain all about what they do, and then I will share with you all the resources that they've made available for educators just like you. Water, it's a vital ingredient for life on Earth. It grows our food, powers our industry, it keeps us clean and makes us happy. Life would not be the same without it. But our water is threatened by pollution, mismanagement, and Earth's changing climate. Project WET Water Education Today provides the critical link between today's water stress and tomorrow's thriving communities through proven science and hands-on learning. Our goal is to advance water education to help address global challenges and inspire local solutions. Project WET is for everyone. Educators and students of all ages use our lessons in their classrooms. Corporations rely on our practical approach to teach their employees the value of water and its inherent connection to STEM. Millions of people in 80 countries and all 50 states work with Project WET each year. We envision a world in which action-oriented education enables a better understanding of the value of water, ensuring a sustainable future for all of us. We can't wait until tomorrow to better understand the value of water. We need Project WET, water education today. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint about all the resources they have available through their website and what we have available here at Soil and Water Conservation District. Okay, Project WET stands for Water Education Today, and Project WET has a, a main web page. All you have to do is type in projectwet.org and you will get to it. Um, Project WET's mission is to advance water education so that people can understand the global challenges and inspire local solutions to water issues. They, we achieve their mission by offering training workshops to educators at all levels to reach children with objective, experiential, science-based water education. We also help organize and inspire community water events, including water festivals and action education projects. And Project WET builds a worldwide network of educators and water resource professionals to advocate for the role of water education in solving complex water issues. With the advent of COVID, Project WET has had to step up its game in providing distance education and online availability for some of its resources. Um, and we, can, we do that through professional development, virtual trainings, as well as online student lessons and activities. Everyone that we provide includes hands-on methodology, and there are digital and non-digital options available to you. Now, Project WET has designed a whole new page of all these distance learning resources. And again, you get to that fairly easily, projectwet.org backslash to distance learning, and you will find all the wonderful resources available to you. Now, Project WET has always been, first and foremost, training for people to teach about water education. And it's been hands-on, it's been wonderful to work with teachers all throughout Alaska um, and at the workshops you do get an, an opportunity to meet other professionals in your area who are interested in environmental education 
Unfortunately, we can't offer the in-person workshops right now, but Project WET has made available a, an alternative. Um, at the, these educator workshops, you receive a Project WET curriculum guide. Now, if you do the online training, you still get this on this curriculum guide. So there, it, it is a at your pace training that's available to you. It does cost $40 right now, but it used to be $60. They've made it less expensive for folks. Um, and it includes an online certification as well as access to the project wet curriculum and activity guide. Now, what is that? That is an NSTA um, recommended guide that includes 21st century cutting edge water education activities. 64 field tested activities that are correlated to common core standards and NGSS standards. It also has a number of useful appendices in it with information on teaching methods, assessment strategies, and more. It can be a very essential classroom tool. It, we have done pre-service training for teachers and many of them have told us they use this guide regularly. Um, when you do get the training, you get access, free access to something called uh, the Project Wet Portal, which lays out all of the activities and all the materials that you will need to teach these lessons are available on the portal free for download. Each of the lessons has been, been designed to be hands-on. They're learning through discovery all about water. They're correlated to standards. There are digital and non-digital options for interactions with the students. They are always student-led. They're self-paced versus teacher-paced, and they're easily adaptable for any educator. So like I said, the training is available online for $40 right now. It is easy to get into, easy to do, and then you get, as a result of taking the training, you get a print copy of the manual, the guide, and, um, and then you get access to the portal. So the portal includes not just activity in the current guide, but activities in the previous version, which was the guide point 1.0. Um, each of the, the lessons are laid out and I picked one activity to show you when you click on it, it gives you all the activity info, files and standards that go with it, resources and follow-up activities that you can do and provides a space for you to give some feedback to Project Web about the activities. Um, again, going back to some of the distance learning um, programs and uh, resources available, they have developed a whole page on all of these resources. So you can easily access it through this link, which is the projectwet.org backslash distance learning. Um, they have put up on there a number of lessons that are in the guide, not all of them, but some of them so that anybody could go and use these lessons free. There are pre-K lessons to a little bit older lessons. They picked a number in every couple of weeks. There's a new lesson they put up on this page. Um, again, free and available for you. Um, there are some other learning resources, including a web page called discoverwater.org, which are self-directed, interactive, activities for students to use. Um, they are, it's targeted for tweens, but anybody can use it. This is what it looks like. Students can come in to this web page and click on any topic and it walks them through interactive activities about that topic. It's very fun and easy to use on any type of device, in, including iPads, as well as tablets. On the resource page, um, there are a number of education materials. 
that are appropriate for many different age groups and cultures, and they offer comprehensive coverage of the topics of water. All of these are available through the web page. Some are free, some are very at an at a extremely minimal cost. One of the things that we can provide for you through Soil and Water Conservation District is if you wanted to get sets of some of these education pamphlets and booklets, um, we can get them for you at a reduced rate, or we might even have them here and are able to send them to you at uh, no cost to you whatsoever. Um, like I said, they have a store where you can go and see some of their downloadable activities, and some are free. Some, like I said, are 95 cents or a dollar fifty. None of them are outrageously priced. Um, one of the things they have available in their store is something called um, getting little feet wet. Now, you do not have to take a workshop to get this book. You do have to take a workshop to get the main curriculum guide. Now, the Getting Little Feet Wet guide is geared for early education, early childhood education. Both pre-K and K-2 options are in this guide. Um, again, at Soil and Water, we have a number of kits and resources, especially to enhance some of the activities that you might choose to do out of the Project WET the org webpage, please contact us. We are more than happy to share with you activity ideas, ways that you can um, interact with what we have available, ways to integrate this into your learning program. Please give us a call. We are more than happy and willing to, to share what we have with you. And I hope you've gotten some good information out of this webinar. And please, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I, I, hope, I hope that you enjoy everything that we get to do in this crazy time. Hi, my name is Molly Gillespie, and I'm the Alaska Coordinator for Project Learning Tree. I'd like to introduce you to Project Learning Tree, which is an environmental education program designed to help connect students with their environment through a hands-on interactive curricula. Connecting students to their environment and to nature enhances student awareness and appreciation of their surroundings, provides opportunities to calm the nervous system, and makes learning fun and meaningful. It increases attention spans and increases knowledge retention. I'd like to highlight just a few opportunities that Project Learning Tree has. What is Project Learning Tree? It is an award-winning curriculum that is interdisciplinary and meets state and national academic standards. It uses trees and forests as windows on the world to increase students' understanding of the environment. Project Learning Tree connects children to nature, engages students in learning, and improves student achievement, and grows 21st century skills, including the ability to think and critically solve problems. Project Learning Tree provides hands-on activities that make teaching and learning fun and engaging. It is for educators of all types, formal and non-formal educators of all disciplines. There's curriculum materials for early childhood, elementary school, middle school, and high school. Families, there are many free activities that can be downloaded from our website. And organizations such as scouts, nature centers, community youth groups, homeschool groups, and more. Project Learning Tree is successful because it's a national program consisting of high quality instructional materials for grades pre-K through 12, is carefully designed professional development, and it has an extensive distribution and support network. 
There are new curriculum and professional development opportunities being updated constantly, and the training and curriculum are now available online. I'd like to share just a couple of highlights from our website. I encourage you to go to www.plt.org. On our website, you will find the curriculum offerings by education level. Again, there's early childhood all the way up to high school with family activities as well. The family activities guide can be purchased from our website, Nature Activities for Families. It has a collection of more than 30 fun activities to do. There are also a number of these activities that are available for free and able to be downloaded from the website. There are teaching materials for all grades levels for high school. Project Learning Tree has just created a new exploration called Green Jobs, Exploring Forest Careers. This is a fun, engaging um, resource as it does have a quiz that students can do to match their personalities with uh, jobs in the industry. There are multiple resources at Project Learning Tree. You can create an account to access all the resources, including student pages for each of the activity that comes with the environmental education guide for pre-K through eight. You can access the guide by signing up for one of the trainings. Once we do professional development in person again, I will provide these trainings around the state, but for now you can go online anytime and once you do purchase the professional development online training, you will have access to many of the guides. There's also uh, resources for educators and tips such as why teach outside in winter. As we know, Alaska has quite a long winter, but that doesn't mean we need to stop going outside. So especially in these times when many of us are doing remote learning with our students, it's important to still connect our children to the outdoors, get them off the screens when we can, and do so in a way that is engaging and meaningful to what they're learning at school. I'm going to share a quick activity that you can do with your students to make nature journals. Nature journals can be used with a variety of project learning tree activities. And nature journals provide a way for students to stay engaged. It captures their thinking, understanding. You can do assessment opportunities with the nature journals. And as I said, it provides an opportunity for engagement. They can share the work that they've done with you, whether you are learning remotely or in person. Hello, I am going to show you how to make a simple nature journal that your students will be able to use throughout the school year. Nature journals can be used for a variety of project learning tree activities. You will need a rubber band. Make sure that it is a larger, wider rubber band. Scissors and a stick. If your students don't have access to a stick or you can't bring them one, they can use a pencil. Notice the stick is about the same size of a pencil. It can be a little wider, but you don't want to get a stick that's too fat and about the same length of a pencil as well. We'll need blank paper for the inside of your journal and something to use for the cover. You can use construction paper, crayons and markers so your students can decorate it. They can use a blank piece of paper and decorate that as well. If they have access to old magazines, you can use an entire page from an old magazine for your cover or you can cut and paste 
pictures from magazines onto your blank piece of paper or construction paper that you choose to use as a cover. You can also use pictures from an old calendar. And that's what I'm going to do. When I took the picture out of the calendar, I realized that the other side has a calendar on it still. So I'm actually going to take two photos of the calendar and put them together so that there's a photo on either side. Hold that in half like a book. That will be your cover. Decide how many pages you want to have inside your journal and use that amount of paper, folding that in half as well. And then take your pages and insert them inside the cover. So now you have your cover. When you open it up, you have your multiple pages for your nature journal. Now we'll make the binding. You will cut two holes into the side of the folded side of your journal. Make sure the holes are just a little bit away from the tops so that they're not too close together. If they're too close together, it does not make a secure binding. So make sure your holes are a little bit spaced out, maybe about an inch or two from the top and an inch or two from the bottom. Your students can put their thumb there and trace their thumb if they need something drawn to cut, or you can simply cut a triangle. Be sure to cut through the cover and all the pages. I don't wanna cut this bear's face off, so I'm actually gonna go a little bit above the bear's head, which is farther from the bottom but that's okay. The point is you want a decent space between the two holes. Next, you're going to open the cover and all of the pages till you get to the center of the book. Your holes aren't quite big enough if they didn't cut through the paper. Be sure to line it up and cut those again. Cutting through every page. If you have too many pages, this can be kind of challenging to cut through every single page. You may have to do it in stages. Just make sure the holes can line up. Open the book and take your rubber band and thread it from the inside through one hole to the outside of the book. Now you're going to take your stick and thread that through the rubber band. From the inside of the journal, you're going to stretch that rubber band to the second hole, again threading it to the back, and this time stretch it up and over that stick. And now you have a fun binding for your nature journal. Be sure to label your nature journal, my nature journal, with your name on it. Nature journals can be used with a variety of project learning tree activities. This is just a number of activities that are taken from the K-8 Environmental Education Activity Guide that a nature journal would be great to use. One thing you can do with nature journals to create some engagement is to have your students head outside with their nature journal and find a special tree. They could find a shrub or bush if they don't live in a tree environment. They're on the tundra somewhere. But make them find their special tree and make some observations to do some simple observations with students, have them write in their journals ahead of time three prompts. I notice, it reminds me of, and I wonder. 
Have them fill out each prompt, for example, for one minute each. For one minute, what do you notice about your tree? For one minute, what does your tree remind you of? Write everything you can think of down. And for one minute, ask, what do you, I wonder about this tree? These prompts can be used in any order, but by ending with, I wonder, your students have come up with questions to ask, with inquiry. These questions can then be turned into investigations, into a science experiment, into a research project. Find out more about your tree. What animals live there? What type of tree is it? Using what they've noticed about the characteristics of the tree, they can then possibly use field guides to identify their tree. Adopt a tree is an activity in Project Learning Tree that goes through various ways that students can connect with their one tree. And by using a nature journal, they can revisit that tree over and over again throughout each season, noticing the changes. This creates a connection that could possibly stay with them throughout the entire school year. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm going to end by sharing my screen one more time with Project Learning Tree information. If you would like to learn more about Project Learning Tree or are interested in becoming a Project Learning Tree facilitator or taking professional development, please contact me. My email is alaskaplt.molly at gmail.com. There are some opportunities for scholarships for professional development. Check out our website for free resources and activities or to sign up for the professional development on your own time. And be sure to check out on our website, our newsletter, The Branch. We put it out monthly and it has a variety of environmental education resources, notice of new instructional materials, professional development opportunities, grants, and more. Here's the information for all of the projects here in Alaska. Brenda Duty is with Project Wild. Uh, that includes the Alaska Wildlife Curriculum from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Mel Sykes is the coordinator for Project WET, Water Education Today. She's the Natural Resource Education Specialist with the Fairbanks Soil Water Conservation District. And myself, I'm Molly Gillespie, the Alaska Coordinator for Project Learning Tree. Finally, I'd like to end with a little note about Alaska's Natural Resource and Outdoor Education Organization, ANRO. ANRO collaborates with organizations, agencies, and school districts to provide education resources, training, and networking opportunities. You can become a member today, and please do check out the website. It is being updated with relevant and useful information as we all navigate our new world in education. Thank you so much.